Well, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we're back at you again, ready to do some teaching this fall on the whole area of principles of faith. And what our goal is, is to come and bring discipleship material, because we're trusting that we can equip each other in the Word of God, and that's what it's all about. So welcome to our first session on Principles of Faith of September 11th, 2023. So this is day one of lesson one, and we're glad that you're with us. And so as we go through, we're going to be walking our way through this book. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I know there's a lot of principles in there that are going to help us in our Christian walk. And so... As we've said, the purpose and goal of this study is to help disciple our lives in Christ Jesus, to have a faith walk with our Lord, with our God. Amen. And we need to get into a deeper faith walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. And there's two areas that we need to be focusing on because the enemy always wants to attack. He always wants to stir things up. And so the Antichrist Satan in these last days, he hopes us to, to knock us down so that we cannot stand firm during our trials and tribulations. And we must be strong in Christ Jesus. We need to be equipped in the full armor of God. And that's where we're going to start. And we're so glad that you're joining us. Thank you again for all you faithful people who gather around the world. I would just, you know, looking at you know, people from Nagaland and people from Africa, people from Nepal, you know, just people everywhere are connecting back in because there's a, a remnant, as you could sort of say, of people who are hungry for the word of God and want to go on a deeper faith walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so greetings to all of you, and I hope you're doing well. You've managed to get through the summer and uh, we're now looking forward to what the Lord wants to teach us. And so as we get into this whole idea, today we're just going to be dealing with the whole area of the preface, the beginning, the foundation stone of why we're walking on this long journey of depth for the Lord. And is to be able so that we can stand firm and equip. And let's look over in Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 and 11 because that this is our foundation stone is so we as disciples so we're not trying to do evangelism through this program we're trying to bring about equipping and uh and materials that will help us to come to the place of standing firm and so in ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 11 i like what paul starts off here he says finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the vials of the devil. And this is the challenge that we face. The devil is coming in and coming at us from every direction. He's attacking the church. He's attacking individuals. But Paul says there's something I want to tell you about. That as you get into the word and let the word of God get into you, you're going to be able to stand and you're going to be able to be equipped in such a way that when these heartaches and challenge comes upon us, we will be able to move forward. You know, when it comes to anything that we need to study, it needs to be based on the word of God. And that's where we find doctrinal truth concerning our faith walk in Christ. It has to be based on the word of God. You know, the word and, and, and studying of it is where we find not only strength, but we find love, hope, mercy, and grace. Amen. And that's what becomes the foundation stone. People are saying, you know, how come you're so different than all of other people you know, when I, who call themselves Christians? Because I get into the word and let the word get into me. And it's the word of God that becomes our foundation. And it's the word of God that... Through it comes the love of God, the hope, the mercy, and the faith of, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it has to be the foundation stone. And so as we begin to study this, we're going to study through in a sense of, in a way that we're going to look at theology. And unfortunately, theology, that word, 
kind of throws us off because we think it's so intense. It's so deep. I don't know if we can really get a hold of it. But theology is not to be our enemy. But it is the means by which God gives us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And it is also the way that God uses to help break the cords and the chains that can enslave us. You know, we not we do not need to be uh, fearful of the word theology, but to realize theology is a study of God, where we're just trying to get more deeper into Christ and let Christ get into us. Isaiah 58, verse 6, he talks about this, Isaiah does, and he says, Is it not that... As is it not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of the wickedness, to underdo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you're that you break every yoke? See, he wants us to be free. You know, people are you know talking about this freedom. We got on the news, you know, the freedom, this freedom, that, all kinds of things, but the only freedom that we can really experience. Even though you could be physically in bondage, like some of our friends over in Myanmar are finding themselves in jail and prison and things like that, you know, you can be still in those physical types of bondages that the world tries to put on us as believers. But we can have freedom in Jesus Christ. We can we can see here that Isaiah, that even though you're under heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke, that the Lord would break every yoke. And I believe John picks up this also and, and Jesus is speaking to it to us in John chapter 8, verse 36, where he says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And so our walk faith, our faith of walk that we are doing and beginning to journey on is to help us to get a deeper knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for the purpose that we can be freer in our Lord Jesus Christ. So when I look at discipleship principles of faith, this title I use for several reasons. One is because we must first come into a personal relationship with Christ through faith, committing to follow him only. And that's the sacrifice life where we walk to committing. It's a relationship. We walk with him hand in hand and we are committed one to another to be his disciples, to be his disciplined ones as we follow Jesus Christ. Secondly, is to have a personal walk uh, that, that we have a personal relationship that results in a walk of faith and trusting both in God and in his word. See, you know, the discipleship walk is, you know, when you boil it all down, is you're putting yourself into his hands and trusting that as his word guides you, it's going to be right. It's going to be faithful. And then thirdly, that reason why we've called it disciples' principles of faith is to take the, to take the discipline of study and daily and, and apply it to our lives daily. So that God can take these God-given principles by which the word commands us to live by. See, I, I've kind of removed the word theology, you know, of faith. I'm using principles because we're going to go through and each day we're just going to look at various principles of the word of God and see how they apply to our own lives. Paul tells Timothy, he says to Timothy, to study, to show himself approved a workman that does not need to be ashamed one who is in a right way dividing the word of truth so we want to enter into the place that we study and that as we say we get into the word and let the word get into us so that we can be a workman that does not need to be ashamed you know i always thought when i pass away that one day and get into the heavenly glory i wanted to have enough of the word in me so that when i make my brothers and sisters in heaven you know i would know who they are i would know how they walked what they struggled with and i could learn from their testimonies and their lives i don't want to be ashamed 
And I'm not also don't want to be ashamed of the word of God. I want to stand firm on the word of God, no matter what the enemy throws at us. But to be a workman, I need to study and I need not to be ashamed. And I need to be rightly taking the word of God and dividing it, dividing that truth or, or I, instead of dividing it and saying, you know, cutting it in half. I like the idea of balancing the word of truth so that it would bring honor and glory that we see the whole counsel of God that is there for us. You know, King David exhorted people to meditate on the word of God, to, which means to reflect on it and to let it become deeply rooted in our hearts. You know, the person who does not like, uh, the, you know, the person who does this is like the Paul or David said is like a tree who is planted by the rivers of water. You know, um, I hope that when we go into this discipleship principles of faith and we continue to study together around the world, it, it will become like a tree where we're planted by the water. You know, we're like that Psalm 1, 1 to the 6 that talks about us. That as we're like a tree planted under the water, he, the, the scripture promises that we will bear fruit. And our leaves will not wither or we will not become discouraged. We will not dry up. You know, I think there's a lot of Christians that are drying up and they are withering on the vine. That's not the word of God. That's not what the word of God says. When you get into the word of God and let the word of God into you, it's like fruit. And it brings life and strength to our leaves. And it says, and whatever he does shall prosper. Now, unfortunately, we always look at this word prosper in a sense of financial prosperity. Well, that's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about that he will grow. He will be strengthened. You know, he will delight. He goes on all because he delights and meditates on the law of the Lord. That's where, that's why the leaves don't wither. That's why the tree doesn't fall over. That's why there's still fruit on the tree because we delight and meditate on the word of God. Amen. And, and, and David knew this. And yes, David fell down and made mistakes and, and fell short, but he knew that the, the real strength was not in the sword, his physical sword or his armor. His real strength was in God. When he stood up, Against Goliath, his real strength wasn't putting on Samuel's armor and everything. It was putting on the full armor of God and standing in him. You know, we need to be grounded and rooted in the word of God. You cannot produce fruit without the word of God. You know, how come people say this often to me, how come you can see miracles in your life and we can't see anything happening in our lives? Maybe because we're not planted by the river. Maybe we're not, you know, getting in, uh, letting our roots get into the uh, nutrients of the soil around the river and the water that can, you know, come up through our veins, as it were, and and nurture us. So the ground provides strength, and it provides subsidence, and and the root channel is is giving the living uh, nutrients so that the plant can grow. And so in order to live, grow, and mature, and bear fruit, we need to be grounded and rooted in the Word of God. That's the foundation. That's why we want to take this time, this fall and next spring, whatever the Lord gives us, the winter season, and get more grounded in the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit activate those things that He wants to speak into us concerning His Word. We do not need to fear the Word of God. You know, the word of God is to be a light unto our path and a guide and a roadmap to us, you know, so that we can get through the challenges that we face on earth. Isn't it interesting? You know, it's like you're going through a deep forest or you're going through a deep valley, whatever it mean it may be. And the Lord, the word of God is saying that his word will be a light unto our path, our path. And a light unto our feet. I love that. Because you know why? Because it's the word of God that will show us where we're standing. And it's the word of God that will show us where we need to be going. 
And that's what's so unique about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal to you where you're standing, where you are. He'll show you if you're off track. He'll show you if you need some changes in your life. But not only that, he doesn't just kind of burn you into the pavement. He doesn't kind of just leave you alone. But he also shows where you are. And then he says, okay, now look, because I'm going to show where I want you to go. I want to use my word to be a roadmap that's going to help us to, fall, to, to, to handle the challenges of life. So what's going to follow is an overview over the next long period of time, an overview of the major doctrines. I know some of you may not have this. If those of you in Canada would like a physical copy, you would have to order it from us and pay the, you know, pay the cost of buying the book. Some others can go to Discipleship Empowerment, and if you scroll down through the resources there, you will see a PDF of this book, and you can just print it off on your computer a few pages at a time, or you can print the whole thing off. Or you can just read it from there. But it's there as a tool. You know, and those of you who are watching in Myanmar, uh, you know, there's 1,200 copies of this book in your language uh, in up in the Michina area. And so you can take it and follow along. If I'm speaking too fast in English or whatever, you can follow us along and I will try to help you where we are. Right now, we're in the preface. We're trying to to uh, set the foundation stone. And so, as we said, we're going to have an overview of the major doctrines. There's 12, I believe, major doctrines that we're going to look at and we're going to study. But, you know, let me just put this in here, that the word theology simply means the study of God. You know, it's not, you know, when we think of the word theology, we think automatically, well, I'm not a, the a theologian. I'm, you know, I just a simple Christian who wants to walk with the Lord. But what you're saying when you're studying theology, you're studying more of God. And I, and I exhort you to take time to draw closer to the teachings and truth of God's word. As we said, get into the word of God so that the word of God can get into us. Amen. And that's why it's so important. So the purpose of this book, this study that we're going to be carrying on, is to try to bring us to a place where we can prove and defend the doctrines of God, the truths, the basic truths of God. Not only will it touch our lives, but it will become weapons or, how would you sort of say, armor for us to be able to stand against the false truths which are going to be out there and are out there. And it's going to be able to help us to stand and our faith walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, studying theology or studying the Word of God is a discipline. It's something that's going to take a little bit of an effort, you know, to wake up early and to get connected and to get into the Word so that the Word gets into us. But not only that, it takes understanding. You can have knowledge and you can have wisdom about a lot of things, but do you understand it? Understanding means that we can, are able to take it to the place that we can regurgitate it or give it back to somebody else. And that's what the discipline life is, is to get that true understanding so we can be a true disciple of the Lord. And a true disciple of the Lord is one who is Christ-like. You know, the word Christian means Christ-like. And that's why we want to get into the word so we can become more Christ-like. It's interesting that when you go over uh, into Acts chapter 11, uh, verse 26, we'll just turn there for a moment, Acts eleven twenty-six, and see what it says. It says, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that the whole year the assembly with the church and taught a great many people and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Why were they called Christians? Because they were discipled. Paul and Barnabas discipled them for a whole year. They probably met even daily. You know, had their supper, then went on over to a, per a certain house or a certain place. And Paul would teach them. Barnabas would encourage them. 
and they were discipled. It says here, for a whole year, they assembled together. <laughs> you know, we're so worried about assembling together for an hour on a Sunday. But they were assembling together probably night after night, just hungry for the word of God. And because, and it says here, and they taught a great many people. There was a large number there. And the disciples there were first called Christians in Antioch. And then it's interesting that as you look back, as you continue to go on, and because they, they were exemplified the teachings of Christ and all that they did and how they communicated with those around them, it's interesting they also become known as people of the way. Acts chapter 9, verse 2, he says, And asked letters for him that the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, that he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Isn't it interesting that for the disciples uh, who were Christians, the way they were going to figure out who these people were, was were they walking in the way? Were they walking in the truth of God? Were they living outside of the things of this world? And they exemplified Christ. And because of that, they were known as Christ followers or Christ disciplined ones, people who walked in the way. So we need to understand that when we get into the word of God and let the word of God get into us, it becomes the rock that we stand on. Jesus is the rock. He's our sure foundation. He's the one that we believe in, we hold close to, and that we desire to fulfill his will. Amen. So as we've opened up our first day, our first lesson of principles of faith, remember that as we go through this, how important that the word of God is there to equip us. But it's not only there to equip us, but it's there to be like armor so that we can be a soldier of the cross. And no matter what the enemy throws at us, we have a shield of faith because we understand the word. We have a sword of the spirit. Because we have the anointing of the Spirit upon us. And that God wants us to give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So that we can apply these words and be committed. Because we are on a faith journey, a faith walk where we're trusting. And that's why we're going to fulfill 2 Timothy 2.15. Where we say we're going to study. We're going to study hard to show ourselves approved a workman or a soldier who doesn't need to be ashamed, but one who is rightly dividing the word of truth. So I encourage you, as we begin our faith walk in this study of principles of faith, that we will meditate on the word, and we will begin to see it like in Psalm 1, 1 to, 1 to 3, for sure, that we're like a tree planted by the water, and that we're going to not only be firmly planted, but our leaves are going to glisten in the sun because they're full of the presence of God and that there's going to be tree or fruit hanging from our tree so that it can feed and bless others. Amen. So as we come to a conclusion today, we want to just uh, every time, hopefully at the end of each day, just to pray about what we talked about and then also to prepare our hearts for what God is going to do us through the day. Now, I know those of you on the other side of the world, you're ending your day right now. But I pray that God will use this time. So let's pray. Father, we ask now that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that as we begin to look into your word, as we begin to use this tool of disciples' principles of faith, Father, that it would help us to grow more in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. But also, Lord... It would help us to walk deeper in our relationship and commitment to you. Lord, that we would have a faith walk where we trust in you. But as we trust in you, as we get into the word and the word gets into us, we pray, O oh God, that we may study it, that we just don't be a hearer of the word, but we would become a doer of that word also, that we would meditate on it. And Lord, help us to be that tree that's planted by the water, where our leaves do not grow weary or... Uh, become dead but father that they would be alive the tree would be alive the fruit would be coming forth and lord that we would remain grounded in you and so we thank you lord jesus that you're calling us to be christians to be christ-like 
You're calling us to be people of the way. And Lord, we ask today that your perfect will will be done in our lives. And we give you all the praise and glory now. And thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I just want to remind you that we're going to be doing this at 8 in the morning from Monday through Thursday. I've left Friday off because sometimes we have to travel to other places over the weekend to preach and teach. And uh, for those of you who are close by in Steinbach, uh, please stop into our office and talk to us. Uh, it's becoming also not only an office where you can gather discipleship materials like this, if you want a copy of this, but also evangelistic booklets and materials that are constantly coming off the press. We've got another new one coming off the press that actually is on discipleship. I wonder if I got a copy right here. Actually, I do. It's called Called to Follow. It's going to look backwards to you, but it's talking about the discipleship lifestyle. It this little booklet is going to give 14 key principles on what it means to be a disciple. And it's just being printed at Dirksen's. I don't have any right now in the office, so don't come wandering over. And then also to continue to pray, we're just finishing up writing another booklet for the Christmas season about the testimonies of our that were around the birth of Jesus Christ. So it's going to be an exciting time. So come on over to the office. We try to be there from... Uh, I think it's 11 to 4. We have various people serving and helping out. And if you locally want to get involved and can give at least uh, four hours or more uh, a day to help us as a volunteer to hand out <laughs> discipleship materials and to do hand out evangelistic materials, we'd love to have you. And so as we close now, we're going to try to post this also on YouTube. And Lord willing, I will also try to put some of the notes on the YouTube channel. So if you haven't signed up to the YouTube channel yet, uh, you may want to do that today so that you can get notes. But if you can't find it there, well, go to Discipleship Empowerment and you got the whole book there and you can just download it. So God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to being with you. And feel free on the message side, not on the open side, but on the message side, if you have a prayer request, you know, put it there and we will continue to pray for you and people at the office will gather together for prayer and lift you up before the Lord. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Keep getting into the word and let the word get into you. Amen. Bye bye for now.